You can't handle the truth. Today, I want to talk to you about the five lessons that hoteliers learn about refurbishments too late. The very first lesson, uh, thing that we need to keep in mind is what I call personal bias. Of course, we all have personal biases, but what I'm saying here is when it comes time to a refurbishment, be aware of them and put them to one side. Let me give you an example. Wireless charging is probably a good one. So I hear hoteliers say, look, my phone doesn't support wireless charging. Therefore, I don't believe my guest phone will either. And it's not something that I'm going to look at at this point in time. The other example is the guest room telephone. Hoteliers say, look, I don't use the phone when I stay at a hotel. My guests are not making outside calls anymore. There's no revenue in it. They forget that room service still comes through the phone. If that was taken as a consideration, just think what we're going through now with the COVID hotels where the phones are really getting a hammering. What would those hotels do now if they decided not to put phones in the rooms when they actually built them? So the, um, the second thing that comes to mind is a one size does not fit all approach, okay? Normally when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about technology and those of you who know me know that I'm passionate about technology. However, I don't believe it is the solution for every problem. I always encourage a hotel to actually have um, a technology solution coupled with a good old fashioned solution so that you can, can, can cater for all of your guests. Let me give you an example. So there was a hotel that I heard of that automated the blinds and the way that you actually controlled the blinds was via a tablet. That's the only way you can control it. However, not all the guests knew that. Um, so what happened? Many of the guests actually just tugged and tugged on the blinds until they broke. Um, and a lot of other guests called reception asking how to open the blinds. If they had have implemented, as well as a tablet, just a simple switch near the blinds that said, you know, to open blind, you know, press here, then that would have alleviated the problem. The third thing that we need to keep in mind or lesson we need to learn is um, are the products that you're looking at designed for a hotel or are they designed for the consumer market? Okay, there is a big difference. Let me give you an example. A Bluetooth soundbar. All too often I see Bluetooth soundbars being put into hotels. They're designed for the consumer market. What happens is they pair up to 10 devices. You wouldn't have any more in a home. So after 10 guests have paired to that Bluetooth speaker, it will not accept any more pairings and therefore it's useless. What we do then is we put in an operational workaround, which means housekeeping have to do a factory reset on that device every time they check out the room. The fourth thing that we need to keep in mind is that price should not be the only consideration or often even the primary consideration. We need to look at the total cost of ownership. Once again, let me give you an example. There was a hotel that I was involved with recently that uh, the kettles that they chose were less than $10. The cost of staying at the property for the night was in excess of $300. If you're a guest staying there, it's pretty obvious how cheap the kettles are. And I don't think it's a good reflection on your brand. For, that's the first thing. But the other thing is you've bought an extremely cheap kettle. How long will it last? Okay, if it lasts six months, great. But what if you spent an extra $5 and had a kettle that lasted two years? So not only did it last longer, it was a better reflection of your brand. The fifth and final thing we need to keep in mind or the lesson we need to learn is what I call a cost of inaction. Once again, let me give you an example around this. So I think it was six years ago now, I would was working with a hotel, um, we we're doing a mock-up room, we, we supplied an energy management solution. However, when it came time to the complete refurbishment, the energy management system was cut because obviously, you know, budgets are tight um, and I completely get that. However, what they decided to spend the $360 
uh, which was the cost of the hardware components of the energy management system on, was a throw cushion, $360 throw cushion, to go on the bed. Okay, I've just recently revisited the cost of the data, that in action. And over the last five years, that has cost the property $500,000. Um, yeah, so that uh, I think is mind blowing. So just to recap, the five lessons are, one, be aware of personal bias. Two, one size does not fit all. Three, is it designed for hotels? Four, price shouldn't be the only consideration. And number five, you need to understand or take into consideration the cost of inaction. I hope you've enjoyed these. If you have, please feel free to like them. If you think they'll be of value to someone else, please feel free to pass them on.